Good evening, it's the night of the 9th of August 2024. The Midland paper published an article on a recent event which I think is highly significant. This is a video to watch, this is not vintage. This is one of the most serious matters facing Ireland. Uh, there has been a rift in the Independent Ireland Party. Uh, Elaine Mullally, A-L-I-N-E, M-U-L-L-A-L-L-Y. She's from Leash, apparently. And she has left the party last month and uh, will now contest the next general election as an independent in Port Arlington area. The reason is that Kieran Mullally joined the Renew Group when he went to Europe after winning his seat. That was the catalyst, and sh she said. Now, she was the co-founder co of Independent Ireland. My computer's broke, so I have to write it down and rehash it here for you. It's okay. Malouli aligned with the Renew Group, which is Fianna Fáil. The, uh, there are other groups more in line with the party's direction, she said. Don't look now, but Independent Ireland is fracturing at the seams, writes some writer in the paper. Fracturing at the seams. In, um, and it's The party, it says here, is in negotiations to join the Democrats in mass. So, in other words, that that must mean that they will join in the EU forevermore, this Fianna Fáil group. I think that's what it means. Now, this is a newspaper article and it's written very quick and it's hard to understand it all. There's no statement at all from Independent Ireland on this development. I asked them, this is now departing from the script, I asked them to come out and make a statement and let us know where to stand. Over the past year, I have dedicated myself, this is what she said, myself as an unpaid volunteer for to create a meaningful political alternative for those of us seeking real change. Right. Uh, my goal has always been to build a, a political party that genuinely listens to and understands the needs of the Irish people, free from hypocrisy and dismissiveness. Now, the leader is he Michael Collins. He said he's very sorry to see her going. And Richard Dunhu uh, is another member of the party. And they're all good enough people. I often wondered what happened the bill they put in. They had a bill put in about the fact that uh, electricity in Ireland is paid the highest fossil fuel uh, um, price. And I wonder what happened it. I just wonder were they nobbled or did they turn yellow? Excuse me. Now I've been watching them very carefully. Because of something I, ident I identify and because of the way I think and most of you will know the way I think. One of the things about the Revolutionary War in Ireland was that the bowl Michael Collins, the real Michael Collins originally, from, from uh, Clonakilty in County Cork or Sam's Cross there, he said when he was in Dublin as the war was going on, there have to be spies among us. Now, he was after going in and breaking into Dublin Castle into the Secret Service area of the British state and viewing their files. But he says there have to be somebody doing it the same. Surely everyone is not on our side. There has to be someone taking money to um, tell the police what's going on. Any police would be remiss not to be doing that. And he sent out orders to his men to find out who they were. And sure enough, they uncovered a few people who were double agents. They were spies. And what his action was is to inform them all to stop it immediately or they'd be killed. And most did. But at least one didn't. And he was shot. And Collins gave a little stipend of a pension to to the widow. It tells you like how, how magnanimous a man he actually was. But I have the same way of thinking. When you have Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, Sinn Féin, the Greens, Labour. Am I missing anyone? Who <laughs> else? Sinn Féin, the Greens, that many of them. All extreme left-wing parties, all extreme cultural Marxist globalist parties. And the people are copying them on. 
and they go to a referendum on the family and on the meaning of marriage and they get beaten by 71 percent they panic they decide to do something a lot of people on my side of the debate went up for election in in areas various ways for independent tds and that was a massive mistake the correct thing to do was to allow the two parties in the in the race independent uh, sorry not independent ireland um, uh, the national party and the irish freedom party to contest the elections as those two parties but they all these other ones insisted on going as independent and they got slaughtered and not only that uh, they, uh, the, their vote did not transfer well it didn't transfer in other words uh, some of the candidates who got maybe 6,000 first preference votes their second preference went to uh, people before puberty or maybe the Labour Party which made absolutely no sense at all it was particularly apparent in Munster However, that was a funny kind of election with big long ballot paper and all of that. But, but the only strategy left to these established crooks, parties, is to put up a Trojan horse. To put up a party that looks to be the new tomorrow, but is actually the old. So I, this is likely to happen. You have to look at the National Party, the Irish Freedom Party and the Independent Ireland as capable of turn traitor. You have to look at it that way. If, if you don't look at it that way, how are you going to spot them when they do? You have to always. The same as if you hire a builder to do a job on your house, you have to be aware of the fact that he might not be as good as he claims. And you have to keep an eye and only pay him as the work is done. You get the point. You have to be cautious. I do it all the time. So the first test with independent Ireland, I don't know what Malouli was saying when he was going up for election. I didn't watch him that tight. But I don't think I saw anywhere where he repudiated the green scam, the renewable energy scam, the mass migration scam, and all of these horrible things that's happening. I didn't see him doing it. But he was ex-RTE. And unless you're a rebel, and you could be in a job where you are a rebel. We saw George Lee get elected with a big majority as a member of an RT staff. We, but we thought he might stay true and stay a TD and give them plenty of trouble. But it turned out he was more wet. He was more global. He was more cultural Marxist, more LBGPQ excessive men in women's sports that's what i understand about him although i have to say he didn't say that much but he looked like a weakling to me anyway we can say that much about him but the point is he gave up his doll seat and he went back to the comfort of rte so he was never a genuine uh, attempt to fix things and here we have this this lady elaine malally who very obviously is genuine. She would share the same approach to me. Afraid of nobody. I'm afraid of nobody. The idea that I would turn Turk or turn left is, is mad. It's, it's impossible. Impossible to do. But yet the leaders, the three TDs, Michael Fitzmaurice, who I thought was sound enough, but I'm not so sure now because he made statements about the planning law, which would which is, is, is ridiculous. He wanted the citizen to have to obey the planning law, but the government not to have to obey the planning law, the planning law. So I became suspicious and I met him and discussed this with him. I thought Michael Collins T D was all right, I thought Richard O'Donoghue who was all right. I wondered what happened, the bill that came in to regulate the electricity market or to amend it. The fact that it didn't resurrect again made me highly suspicious. So I can't really say much about them. But this phenomenon of a new party coming in pretending it's something that it is not and getting the elect the votes from the people who think they're getting a new product when they're not is a very real phenomenon. And I've given and made a video demanding independent Ireland meet me for a start. I want a discussion.
over a table. Come on. If they don't do that, we need to see some party document. They were to have a meeting, I think in Port Leash, somewhere down there in the Midlands, recent in, in this time of year. And because Elaine has pulled out, uh, they had to cancel it. And they're getting some councillor from Cork to man it. According to the article, others may have maybe about to pull out as well. The point is, I would have looked to join Independent Ireland. I was near enough asked to join them. So they must have an, an invite to me to join them would appear that they were genuine enough. But it could be that they wanted to get me in there and get me in then and outvote me that I'd have no say. Get in the wild fox that's going into the chicken house and put a halter on him. And then I'd have to tow the party line. And that'd leave me, make me leave. And when you'd leave, you'd have to look for another party. So I did that assessment myself. And I have to shake hands with myself. Unless the Independent Ireland shapes up pretty soon and we get to know what they're up about. And if they won't meet me and discuss it with me, I will be able to judge them down to a fine tooth comb. I'm a good judge of character. But Elaine Mullally has judged them and maybe more, and she doesn't think they're the future. I think they're just Fianna Fáil light. They're just another branch of Fianna Fáil. When they got the first chance, they jumped into bed with a Fianna Fáil grouping in, in Europe. The article suggests they want all to jump into the same bed. And it looks to me and that Maluli, not sorry, not Maluli, Maluli Kieran Maluli, the Cosdorf Malali and Maluli, Elaine Mullally is the person who pulled away and left the party. Kieran Mullally is the famous RTE journalist and big into the farming and all that. But the bottom line is the minute he got elected, the first statement out of his mouth was to tell on RTE that he had not turned a climate denier and that he was a safe pair of hands. And as the article says, he can still go in to the, to the canteen in RTE and meet all, 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 the, all, the, all the jokers in there and feel at home. Meanwhile, me, you and others can go to hell. We can go to hell. Maluli should be kicked out of the party. I'd get rid of him. Let him off on his own. See how he'll do the next time. That's what I'd do with him. He should never have been picked. If the independent Ireland is genuine, they picked him because he was well known. He was a good man for a vote. That's a very short-sighted thing to do. You build your party up slow but sure. And I'd have taken, picked up somebody else. We'd have got somebody. Somebody else would have been there. Well, I can tell you, if I had to join Independent Ireland, I doubt very much if I would have been the candidate. I doubt very much if I'd be the candidate. And I don't think I'd want to spend my money fighting an election to be a European MEP when the real decisions is made in Dáil Ayrton in the Irish Parliament. You get me point. So it seems to me that my assessment of this whole thing was right from the beginning. It may be that independent Ireland is nothing more than a, a buffer or a kind of a Trojan horse or a thing to fool the people into thinking it's something new when in fact it's not. I'm sure that this woman, um, uh, Elaine Mullally, would have had a say in the choosing of Maluli. And if she hadn't, we have to ask the question, who made that decision? Who decided to put him in there? Who decided to join Renew? I'd like to hear Richard Donoghue and Michael Collins tell us why did you join Renew when there was plenty of other groupings? It's a blessing in disguise, for it's the it's the budgerigar in the coal mine. He gets sick with the fumes first and warns the men. He drops dead first because he has a smaller lung. And this act should raise the hairs of everybody that, that independent Ireland must come out now and nail the colours to the mast. As I understand it, Mahi McGrath didn't join them. That's telling. Mahi, Mahi McGrath is a very astute politician. I'm beginning to think I was spot on about independent Ireland. And that article... That article, I'll post on the need, I, I have to take it off the mobile and I do the video on the mobile 
my computer's broke. I was busy today making something. I get it sorted in time. But that is my opinion. That's my assessment. That's what they do. When their back is to the wall and the people are going to reject them, they get another party to come in. And this is what happened with Sinn Féin. All this corruption with the traditional parties, Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, the Greens and, 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 um, and Labour, was causing them to hemorrhage votes. And so the people said, I'm going to Sinn Féin. And they'll fairly straighten them. And I heard people telling me, they'll fix it up. Don't you worry, they'll fix it up. But I could spot that that was nothing only a ploy to keep the woke left globalist uh, um, agenda running and keep it going and get them back into the doll with Mary Lou MacDonald in charge and the mass migration, the whole lot, the green agenda, the climate change, the whole damn thing going full steam ahead and perhaps with uh, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil as coalition parties. I think that that has been proven to be the case. I think none of my listeners think for one moment that Sinn Féin is anything other than a Fianna Fáil with the, with the Fianna Fáil with the border. Mad for all this destructive politics and great relationship with the British Labour Party under Keir Starmer, a full-blown communist tug. So there we have it. Uh, now this girl has pulled after being working for them for a long time. And this makes me rather proud that I looked at the two parties, I looked at the National Party, and I, I still have good time for it, but I felt that it wasn't as electable, but maybe it will return. It got, it, it got a, a councillor, maybe it'll come back. And I looked at the Irish Freedom Party under Herman Kelly and all the staff there, and they looked very good to me and very sensible people. I said, well, sure, why not go with them? And I think that was a very, very good decision to promote them. Maybe, maybe I know what you're saying. Maybe we can join the two parties up. Don't say too much. Don't say too much. Don't mention it. You never know. You never know. If I could have had to do with it, we'll all be in the one, in the one wagon. Folks, that's the situation. Thank you very much. But there is my prediction coming, coming true. There is it coming true. Now, folks, my phone rang. I have the sound off and up with the vibrators on. And a person knew I was making this because they were talking about it earlier and they rang me. And they made the point, this person voted for Independent Ireland in Ireland North West. They voted for, for Independent Ireland and they voted for Malouli because they felt he had the best chance of winning. And their view is very, very angry that they were deceived into voting for Independent Ireland and deceived into thinking Malouli, Malouli, Kieran Mullooly was where it's at. They now believe he's not where it's at. That in fact the vote they cast uh, back at the European elections, was that the 7th of June I think it was? Don't quote me on that. Was a wasted vote. There was well they had to go in and vote for Fianna Fáil or Mary Walsh. The woke, remember those words folk. W-O-K-E. People got to get their head around this. It's on the television and it's many a place. Remember it. What about the voters who voted? How did Richard O'Donoghue and Michael Collins allow genuine people, genuine voters, to be, be deceived into voting for a party that joins up with Fianna Fáil in the Renew Group in the EU Parliament? And I think the reality is the, the independent Ireland may be a completely, utterly woke, semi-communist, mass migration, everything, and possibly anti-farmer. That is the situation. Where are they on the fossil fuels? Where are on the wind energy scam and the electric car scams? I don't think that where it's at. Folks, we'll see you back for something else. Comment underneath. Good luck and goodbye.